Today I'm going to just do a basic lesson of how to diagnose why a fan motor is not working. If you happen to come across a fan motor that's not working, you can figure out why that is. Even though I only have two hands, we're still gonna gonna do that. The fan motor's in here, and it's that one, right there. And the reason that I know that the fan motor's bad or something is wrong is because I come up in here and I look and the contactors pulled in. So how do we know which one that one is? There's six of them. How do we know? Well, here's your controls right here. This is what receives the signal from the E2 to tell it to come on and it energizes each different one here. So which one is not working? So let's unplug the first one here. All right. It's really hard to tell on the camera. But the one in that corner over there is the one that stopped. Now I'm going to plug it back in. And while I'm plugging it in, we're going to watch it. Okay, so that one is number one. Because, because why? Why do we know that? Because when we unplug it, this contactor is the one that stops and it's labeled C1. And make sure when you're doing this, by the way, try not to touch any of the, of the metal conductors there because it'll zap you. Not with three phase, of course, fortunately. It's just 110 or 220, whatever. But All right, so that one is one. So I expect that the next one is going to be number two. And it is. So, doing that, we do number three and number four. Nothing happens when I do number four because that one over there is number four. What about number five? Let's see, that's number five. Yeah, it's that one. And number six. Yep, that one. So it's number four that's not working. We know that now. Now, why would it be? Could it be that we have a bad fuse? Fusible links up here has a fuse blown. So do we have a shorted motor or do we have an open motor? That's the question. And like I said a little bit ago, I only got two hands. So let's see. If we have proper voltage going to everything, that would indicate, more than likely, that the windings in the motor are open. So let's look over here at one that we know is, is working. Ooh, 480. Ooh, 479. Ooh, 480. Okay. The power comes from this way, from up there, down into these lines, and they and out to the motors. So let's check L1 or L1 to L2 or T1 to T2, whatever you want to call it. Number one to number two. We got power. Number one to number three. We got power. Number two to number three. Again, we got power. So, I believe that our motor is either out on thermal overload or the windings are open. Now, me like an idiot, I only brought this up from my truck and it's like a long ways to go back to my truck to get 
my tools. So what could I do to safely test this right here? Not that one, that one, number four. So I wanna measure my resistance through my wires to see what I got, but there's power there. So if I try to measure ohms with my meter while there's power, I'll fry my meter. I got no, no other tools. Well, this happens to be a three-pole contactor. So if I disengage the contactor, that means all power should be lost on the outlet side. Let's see, let's find out. We got power here on number three. Okay, so we're reading power, let's see, on number four. Nothing, that says 433, but that's micro voltage, tiny little voltage. But let's check really good and be sure, nothing. Over here, even more sure, nothing. Okay, let's go to ground. Nothing. Nothing. We're safe. We're safe. Alright, so let's look on our meter. Looking at ohms. Let's measure resistance. Let's see if you can see right there. I think you can. Okay, you can see there. Good. We're gonna go. Number one to number two. Open. Number one to number three. Open. Number two to number three. Open. Let's do range. Anyways, okay, so we've concluded that this motor, three-phase big motor right there, we have no resistance on our windings over here. I'm going to have to go to my truck anyways. Ain't that stupid? So, we go above and beyond here. Got to do a good job. Take the things off. Take the grill off. I'm going to see if I can remove the blade and then I'm going to take the electrical cover off and I'm going to make sure I don't have resistance at the terminals. Now even though the motor's not working right now, I'm going to unplug it there because God forbid if I'm screwing with it, if it's out on thermal overload or anything stupid happens, while well, I'm messing with it, if it comes on, it will cut my hand right off. Now then, it's just, just the easiest thing to do is just to climb up there if you can instead of trying to work off a stupid ladder. Now once you're up here, you get your tools you can be using to do this, okay? These most of the time are half inch. And most of the time they come loose like that, so that's good. Every once in a while they'll seize up with the nut that's down on the inside in there. And man, that really sucks when that happens. Get your four screws out and then you can lift top off and you can set it actually on top of another one of these and fit perfectly. Go more like that. And then you want to try to see if this stupid thing here will, will come free. Most of the time they don't. It's better if you uh, if you don't know if it's going to come loose or not. It's better to, to get a, a blade with it than to not get a blade. And of course if you try hard enough and use different methods, like, I don't know, heat, you can sometimes heat this up and get it loose. Sometimes you can add heat and anything will come loose and nothing, nothing you do will get it off. This one must have been recently replaced or installed or something because I was able to just lift it right out. Next, you got three screws here. Get your screws out and pop off your cover. It looks like there's nothing wrong with this one, with the wiring. I think we got a bad motor here. Let's make sure. Once you've made sure your power is off, it's very important your power is off. You want to make sure you don't mix up how these are connected, just in case the thing works in a little bit. And you can take off. You take off just two of them. That's fine. You just want to make sure you don't have any any loops, which we wouldn't anyways because this is going straight to a. a a three-pole contact there was nothing else connected to it but when you're working on stuff like residential or other types of uh, circuits you can back feed resistance to other other things let us see here what we got nothing oh, hold 
Hold on, hold on. We got nothing. And just to be sure. It works. Either works. Okay. And yet we've got nothing. Just like at the contactor. So we've verified our wires good and that the motor is bad. So we're gonna get uh we're gonna seek approval to replace the motor. We'll submit a quote and do that, and then if it gets approved, probably in like a month or two, I'll be able to come back out and replace it. So hopefully this video helped you some. If it did, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Subscribe and like and leave me a a, a, a comment. Oh, and by the way, don't cut yourself on this. These things, man, they are fucking sharp, man. Tell you what, that's how I get cuts like that. And and stupid freaking cuts. I'm telling you, man, be careful. Be careful with these damn blades, man. Any of this equipment, all these edges, man, they're all freaking sharp. Be careful. Also, be a professional and put things back the way they were.